Hello everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube series. As you can see, there's been an upgrade to the layout, and I have finally installed my double tunnel entrance. In today's episode, I want to talk about the design in more detail, as well as the modifications to the wooden frame of the second level. So to begin, I was thinking, what makes for an interesting tunnel entrance? I rewatched some old videos from Great Toy Train Layouts of America, and found inspiration in the footage from someone named Michael Prima. This guy has a superb layout. Michael Premack also stresses the importance of having to make sure the trains are interesting for the viewer to watch. After watching these clips, I realized that it would be interesting to make an ankle tunnel entrance that would go across both loops on the first level. By having the entrance at an angle, the trains would either be appearing or disappearing while taking the curve. So I took measurements for the space between the first and second levels and got to designing in Studio I.O. After several variations and little changes, I settled for this design. It's sleek and saves on bricks compared to previous versions. There are a total of 327 pieces. It's a bit robust, but I prefer designing things this way. One important design detail was that I had to make sure that there was enough clearance for my tallest trains to pass through. My prototype was ready. However, this is where the problems really started. See, I designed this tunnel in Studio I.O. to fit over a pair of straight tracks, but I goofed because my intention was to run it across the curved section of the double loop, so it was not wide enough. Another problem was that the second level was just too short. I could really use a lesson in planning ahead. So there were several options. Option one was to just place the tunnel across the straight track and build around it, but that would defeat the entire purpose of the ankle tunnel being special. Option number two was to shorten the tunnel. This would fix one problem, but would also prevent a few of my trains from running on the first level. Plus, I would still have to widen the tunnel. Option number three was to widen the tunnel and raise the second level by 1.5 inches, but this would require the most work. Guess which option I went for? Number three, of course. You can see here from the two dark gray pieces that I widened the tunnel by four studs. Next, I did some more thorough calculations for the new height for the second level supports. The tunnel is 9 and 1 8 inches, or 23.2 centimeters. However, I made sure to account for the height of an extra plate and base plate. Next, I had to add the missing 1.5 inches, or 38.1 millimeters, which is where the supports for the second level are recessed into the frame. The final height for the new supports is 10 and 7 8 inches, or 27.6 centimeters. The widened tunnel was placed and the angle was measured. From there, I cut a piece of plywood to match the angle, which was 30 degrees. All of this was a lot more work than I had in mind, but I'm really happy with the result. When I build a rock face eventually, I'll make sure to blend it with the tunnel entrance, but that's another episode you'll have to wait for. In the next couple of videos, I'll be working on the upper level of the city. Also, I'll be putting up a video next week with instructions for this tunnel entrance for anyone who wants to use them. See you next time!